Welcome, everybody. <clears throat> Welcome to uh, Energy Play Shop number 36. Today is February the 23rd, 2023. I have to um, mention that I, uh, <laughs> I was going to do dimensional traveling today. However, I, I was just not in the, the not in shape enough to do that because when I when I take you all into um, travel the different dimensions I'm also responsible for protecting you guys but if I'm so tired I I do not have confidence that I will be able to um, take you all to travel <clears throat> safely so that's why I shift things a little bit around I'm going to actually still talk about traveling but it's actually more traveling inwards and I'll explain a little later on. So that is that's a, a, a shift in what what I'm going to talk about this evening. And um, so I still want to actually just start with a presence meditation so that we can all because we all had different things to do in our um, early in the day. So let's just do a presence meditation, a, a short one, just to get everybody present, including myself. <laughs> okay, so everybody just take a deep breath in. And then let it all go. Take another deep breath in. And this time as you breathe out, just focus on letting go of any tension in your body as well. As you breathe out, let go of the tension in your body. And then breathe in one more time, deeply. And as you breathe out, let go of any tension around your head, neck, shoulders, all over the body. Just relax as much as possible. And continue to breathe in and out according to your own unique rhythm. But still with the intention of making your um, each breath a little bit bigger than your normal breathing. This way it will facilitate you in feeling more relaxation in your body. And as you keep on breathing in. As you breathe in also set the intention you want to call back all of your attention and energy to yourself. During the day, you have so many things to do, errands to run. And you send out your attention. So now as you breathe in, bring those attention back to yourself. And as you breathe out, let go of anything that does not serve you in this moment. Just set the intention of whatever it is that my body does not need anymore, just breathe it out. Call back your own attention, your own energy, until you start to feel You're more in your body. And feel that you are actually more present to what's going on inside your body. You can feel what your head, your neck, your chest, and the rest of your body feels like. all over your body, just pay attention to yourself. 
And when you fully back inside and present to yourself, then you can come back all the way into the room and open your eyes if you have closed them. So welcome back, everybody. Um, I was, earlier today, I was trying to um, work on preparing for uh, dimensional traveling, going to fourth dimension, talking about all the things that we can do in terms of healing the body, all that. And then I just noticed my energy was just going down, <laughs> further down. I was just not getting to... Um, not able to hold it together so I thought okay <laughs> this is not happening I have to I have to walk my own talk because I, I I mentioned that when you're not balanced or when you are not very grounded then don't travel so <laughs> not traveling tonight <laughs> not traveling outside anyways <clears throat> um, I want to preface the there's a difference between traveling inward and traveling outward. So traveling, when I meant when I say traveling outward, is is really activating the zero point because zero point is within our body, like um, within our heart. There is a zero point, um, and some other people I know I, I've mentioned it uh, before is that it's called the tiny space of the heart. So that zero point is really where um, everything meets. When there is no outside, no inside, that's the zero point. That's where you're, you are connected to the universal creator. And that's where the zero point is. So, and we have that within ourselves. So that's, we have access to that. And that's the zero point. And um, when we travel inwards, which means we go to the, the zero point, we activate the zero point, and we start to grow the zero point as well. Because usually we, we send our attention out. We don't, uh, most of the time, we don't really look inside. And when we don't look inside, because our attention goes wherever it is that we, um, um, that we place our energy goes wherever it is that our intention goes, then the zero point becomes like really very small, just like a pinhole, barely there. And when we start to look inside, then we start to grow the, the, the zero point. And when we grow this zero point, we are actually occupying our body more. And why is that good? Um, I remember Roxana um, messaged me to to talk about you know because um, there's there is uh, um, a a couple of videos that Carrie K did we talked about entities and 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 you know and I know um, some of you may be um, nervous about entities like ghosts or different entities that may not be um, may not be for your highest good. So those those I am more talking about negative entities. And um, entities and yes, entities are really growing and growing now. Growing not because there's more of them, growing because um, for two reasons. One reason is there, there are lots of, there's starting to be more people checking out. So um, there, I'm not going to mention any particular incident, but I'm, I'm sure you, you know what I'm talking about because um, YouTube may not like the, the, me to actually mention the particular incident, but, you know, there's been places where there are earthquakes or maybe there have been um, somehow um, poisonous gas being leaked out in the environment. So 
So these things, and there will be more and more of these similar type of um, events happening, which is which gives an excuse for people who are not here to um, move on to the fifth dimension to actually check out. Or even for people who want to move on to the fifth dimension, they may choose to check out and come back in again when everything is said and done, because it just was not, it's not their, um, it's not their soul's calling to come here and do the groundwork. So there are people that have elected to stay here to do the groundwork, to um, create the fifth dimension, create new systems, and then there are people who so really would, uh, is much better suited to just come and experience it rather than doing the groundwork. Um, like it takes all sorts to create a an experience. So that's why for whatever reasons, there will be lots of people checking out um, for at least until 2030. So this is nothing new. I've mentioned this to you earlier in the year already. And now that you you have some idea of what some of the events uh, are is actually going to be for to facilitate people checking out. So that's that's one of them. One of the reasons why. And the other reasons is that the people that are really here and they're committed to do the work to create and, and, and grow and integrate fifth dimension, their source light is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And when your source light is getting bigger, you, 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 the um, um, entities cannot feed on you because the entities, they are dark entities. They like dark energy. They don't like bright energy. Bright energy is kind of like poison to them. So when you have more light, they look at you and they run the opposite direction. So when um, the more more people is going to grow their own source light, then you know it's less food for the uh, entities to feed on, and people checking out. So everyone pretty much have entities. I can I can guarantee you, um, unless you really ascended master, you've completely um, grow your light to, 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 to the maximum it can be, then there's no, no uh, space for entity to, to reside in your energy field. But otherwise, most people would have entities. The, the only thing is, is it more entities, a lot of them, or just a few, or how active and how um, energetic the entities are, depending on how how much negative energy that person is still carrying around their body. So that's that's why um, entities, there's more entities going out to look for people to feed on. Because when the when one host, one of the hosts check out, where are they are gonna go? If they go with the 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 um, the dead person, that person may be going back to source. So they don't want to go back to source. They want to stay in this dimension and feed on whatever is left of the negative energy. So they're going to try to find the next nearest person that is still um, have negative energies that's in their body. So. And um, that's why traveling inward is something that is relevant to talk about because traveling inward is one of the most effective way that I know of to grow your source light. The, when you grow your zero point, because your zero point exists for most people at first, it's like a pin, just like a pinhole. When you start to grow, then you would grow that pinhole into 
occupying more of you until it's actually beyond your physical body and it grows into your energy field. And when you grow your, your source light to be that big, um, entities don't like you anymore. They just unfriend you and just leave. So if you don't want un entities, you don't want to be um, troubled by entities, then zero point growing really uh, traveling inward is one of the best way to do to do that. So um, questions so far? Any questions that I explain this? Um, what, how come there are more entities now? Okay. <laughs> Wonderful. <clears throat> and okay, let's see. Oh, okay. So why growing zero point is um is the way to do it it's because the zero point is really your source light and source light within source light you start to um within zero point you can get to anywhere you can go past you can go to future you are not bounded by time and you can go to any any universe, any part of the universe. You can go to any, um, get information from any dimension just by going into the zero point, zero point, because that's source. When you connect to source, you, you know, basically know anything. You can have access to anything. So why do we actually bother to go out and travel and and get um, hit by other entities who may not be very nice? Why do we bother to travel outwards to um, the different dimensions? Because when you go within, you know, you, you get access to the knowledge, like universal knowledge. You can, you can get to know anything and you can find answers to anything. However, you don't experience it. You don't feel it. You don't see it. So if you want to feel, if you want to see, and if you want to hear all the, the so it, it, in other words, experience, actually experience dimensions through your senses or through your um psychic senses, then you need to travel outwards. That's one way. That's that's one of the reason why um, you may want to travel outwards is you actually want to see in, instead of knowing what an, um, the information from an entity, you may actually want to go see the entity and actually talk to them. It's, it's kind of like, do you want to um, actually go and meet somebody for coffee or you want to just get all the answer and talk to that person telepathically. So it's it's kind of something like that. The difference is some, some of us may want to actually go and travel um, outwards. And the other reason why we may want to um, travel outwards is that because we are growing the, the a zero point from like a pinhole we are traveling inwards it takes a lot of energy because we're not used to it so it it takes a lot of energy to go in to activate and expand the zero point so that's the that's also the difference between um why some people may want to actually go and um travel outwards to the dimensions and experience it versus going into zero point. However, <laughs> there are also benefits in going to zero point as well, because zero point, you have access to everything, anything you want, especially if you want to find information about yourself, not just 
this much as we need. I can get information about all my past life, my lineage, anything I want to know about me, I can I can find that within zero point. And not just know it, but I can actually change reality for me too. Because when I know all the information about myself, I can actually go back to a certain time and change um, something or process something, change something in the past. And that in itself is going to change the future. So when the added benefit of going inwards, going to zero point is we can actually change the future. So <laughs> questions so far? about um, when you want to go travel outwards or when you want to go travel inwards? So I, I think like from everything, first we have to know when we are traveling outward, uh, if there is, we communicate with any entity, we should be more aware, like what, who that entity is. Is it negative, is it positive? or it's gonna benefit or not. So it's, for me, I understood, like it's better to go inward first and then go outward because then you will be more aware what we what I'm doing, I'm talking about myself. So if I do go inward first, it will be better, it will be benefit for me to understand outer side, uh, outer world. Um, you can tell whether someone, uh, an entity is good or bad, just, just by being sensitive to energy, because energy does not lie when, um, when you feel, when you're accustomed to a certain level of energy, you would feel how it feels. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just from my own experience is that when I'm talking to really high vibration um, entities, I feel blissful. Like my body knows, my body has that knowing that, oh, this energy is good. It's like I, I just took some LSD, it's like, oh, I'm blissed out, that kind of feeling. Then I know that, oh, okay, this, this, this entity is actually um, more of a high vibration entity. And entities that is um, not high vibration, it feels very different because your own body is um, knows. What I'm trying to say is that, um, yes, you can if you want to just stick with traveling inward. However, there are more than one ways to find out whether an entity is good or bad. Um, and also it's part of the, um, is part of your own training as well to be able to decipher what the energy level is. Um, so one of the things I, I'm not sure of whether, whether I've, talked about it is to know truth so usually we will ask when you mm -hmm. go and encountered a like when you're traveling outward and um you you come across an entity you ask them okay so you don't ask them hey are you good or, or, or bad no you ask are you um of the are you in the light paradigm mm -hmm there and you receive an answer um and sometimes if that that uh, entity is really tricky they may not say no very directly they may say, say something that is not a straight out no but then not a straight out yes as well so then you um you have to develop the, the inner knowing yourself of whether that 
entity is actually lying, trying to deceive you, or whether they are actually being truthful. And, and truth has a frequency that is very different. And you, the only way to, de to develop that ability is really to train yourself, to train yourself. And, um, and it takes practice. So like you said, uh, almost everybody has the entity around. So how person like me, how do I know that? Yes, there is entities around me. Like if, if I, I can feel that like when the energy coming down, when I feel that, okay, yes. And I say, thank you. That mean, I don't think that it's entity. I think like it's energy. And uh, to me, because of the culture we grew up in, they think the entity is always bad. So it's like ghost and, uh, you know, they will do bad things to you. So it was kind of scared us like, oh, don't go there. It's dark and there's, you know, black magic. There's this. So we, when we see entity, when we hear entity, when I hear entity, we always automatically, the, oh, no, 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 it's a bad thing. So to come across, yes, I, I have worked a lot, but like a person, how, like if somebody comes here now, say, oh, you have entities. Now I will pass. I will say, okay, let me feel it. Let me see what it is. If I feel good, then I say, oh, you know, it doesn't matter to me. If I feel irritated or something, then I'll say, okay, go away. I don't need you. <laughs> you know? I don't know if I'm doing right or wrong, but that's what my practice is. Um, uh, great. Good. Good. Thank you for asking that question. So the... So, okay. It depends on how sensitive you are. So I can I see entity mm -hmm. and I can feel them touching me. And when they like e even when there's some at the back, they like I would feel a different energy because I know my own body. I know what my body actually feels like. And when mm -hmm. something that is foreign starts to touch you, you would uh, oh, I shouldn't say you, but I can tell that, oh, okay, there's an entity that's trying to touch me and get my my attention. Then mm -hmm. I have a choice. Do I go into fear mode and it's like, oh my God, they're touching me, this is bad. So I'm trying to hide. Then um, so or I can just so usually that does not uh, work. Like when like fear, when like if you're fearful, it's it's like you because the entity comes to you because they want to feed. They want mm -hmm. something for you or you are attracted to them because the negative energy, the, the part mm -hmm. of you that it has, that it still has not um, processed those, those mm -hmm. negative emotions. It's mm -hmm. still stuck in your body. That's why they, 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 they think that you are delicious. It's like chocolate cake. Let me go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let me go and pay a visit to this person because this person has emotions and they are not processed yet and I just want to feed on them mm -hmm. um so that's usually how uh, it, like even if you're not sensitive to energy you would be able to um know when you have entity or not okay. entity is usually a it's like um a, a loop so it's a negative thought that is looped around is looped around because the entity is there and it wants that it's mm -hmm. feeding on it so that's why it's always trying to encourage you to keep looping let's say if, if somebody is is bad to you or somebody say something and you you don't like it then they actually um loop it around they they, they help you to loop it around so that you know, at first it's only you, you're only five percent angry with that person. But the more you think about it, because your entity is trying to encourage you, it becomes 10%, 20%, it grows. 
like when you when you start to be able to um, detect that, oh, okay, I'm always thinking about this negative thought. And it's, it's kind of like, I can't, I, I can't seem to get out of that loop. Then you know it's an entity. Because mm-hmm. usually we have one thought, like somebody may be nasty to us, but like we experience it and then we drop it and we move on. But when when a negative emotion um, is looped around, then you know it's it's an entity at work. Mm-hmm. So that's thank you. Yeah, Vinny, can you repeat what you ask? Uh, entity, are you in a light paradigm? Is that what you ask? Yeah. yeah. Are you here for my highest good, for example? Oh. I'm here for my highest good, right? Yeah. And I also want to talk about how to um, release entity as well, because I think you guys may want to know. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I've I've tried this and I and I've tried this myself because um, yeah, I have entities. So everybody has entities, and I'm working with mine to get it to um, being a very um, tamed and, and kind of lethargic entities. And hopefully one day it'll be gone. So the entity release is um, when you catch yourself looping, is you, so you acknowledge that you're looping with a, a negative emotions. Then you know, okay, entity is around and it is revving up that that um, negative thought and trying to make that negative thought to create even more negative energy to feed on the um, so first thing you acknowledge it okay I notice oh this is happening because you it becomes conscious when you're conscious of something then you can make a different choice when you are not conscious of it you're not aware you think, okay, ah, I'm angry, but you know, I, it's, it's the righteous anger. Then um, if, you're, if you're lost in that anger, then yeah, it's going to take you for a ride. Nothing you can do. First thing is to notice it, be conscious of it. When you're conscious of it, then you choose. You choose to just observe it. You don't try to... Um, perpetuate it you just observe it you don't judge it you just observe it if you still feel the anger and you, your mind is still looping just watch your mind looping and it will start to calm down because you your um your awareness will start to understand that oh this is something something else looping not me looping and when that's when you're aware of that, then the energy starts to diffuse, and that's how you can release the entity. And if you do this often enough, there will be no food, no more chocolate cake for the entity, and the entity will say, eh. <laughs> And so it, it, so sorry, so it only happens when you are in a negative mode. You're thinking about the negative, not the positive, right? Okay, thank you. Vinia, I've heard uh, that uh, if you wanted to release entity, you just give the com- command, go to the light or go to the so- back to the source. Is it true? True. If you have no fear. No judgment. Mm-hmm. If you are afraid, the entity know you're afraid. <laughs> it's like, huh, you want me to go and you are afraid? I'm gonna stick around and see what you are gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea how powerful you are, but most people don't own their own power. They they give their power away. They give their power away. When you own your power and you say, 
go. They will go. That when I have, go. I have a question. Uh, so you have uh, daily events, then people you interact, they, you know, act unreasonably, and as a result, you know, you, I get angry or or I get upset or I get sad because, you know, irrational behavior of rational people that I thought they were very rational. So what do we do in that moment? Like you, you just can't live this life without having those interactions. Like they happen to everybody. Does that mean that their entity becomes like influence, kind of like how that works? Um, okay, I, I, I understand. Yes, and um, I can only give you example because I don't know in specific what it is that you that is happening in your case. But I know from my own example, my relationship with my mom. At first, you like she triggers me. <laughs> like you, you guys know that <laughs> my mom triggers me. But now I've got to the point where. Even when my mom is, you know, being completely um, out of order, inappropriate, I, it does not face me anymore because I know that, you know, a lot of the times she's because her body is not well. So she is frustrated. She's, she's struggling. So that's why um, when when I'm around, she may want to vent. So that's what, what she's doing. So I don't take it personally. I don't take it that, oh, my mom is, is, um, is just shouting at me. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I ang I'm angry. Why? I don't deserve it. I don't go there. I just, oh, okay, my mom is tired. So next thing I do is what can I do that is going to um, make sure she's not tired? Uh, so. I take over the cooking. So when she doesn't have to do much, then she's not as tired and she'll be able to just be more uh, reasonable. So don't take it personally. It's, it's not in their behavior is not because of you. Their behavior is a statement of their own state of mind not so don't take it personally it's not because you know you are you it's not because of your fault or anything like that i understand that that's in personal relationships but in business somebody intentionally does something to that person that affects your relationship to that person and affects the results of the work that we have to do together and sometimes it's intentional sometimes it's non-intentional from let's say that um and it happens all the time you know some people just climbed up over that bodies and some other affair but they get misrepresentation so it takes time to clear the muddy situation kind of so it's not like uh my friend said something to me and I got upset. Like I, that those things are real kind of at this point, easy to deal with. Mm -hmm. Can you give a better example? Like, um, um, can you give me more of an example? Uh, when you work on something as a team, there is 10 people. So now when you work, everybody's offside. So one person intentionally or non-intentionally talks to the to the king guy and then you know like you have you don't even know what the interaction was you just get the response that you don't know even the the cause of that response so does that mean that my entity is negative or those people are negative like those situations are very complex but they happen all the time <laughs> I'm still not sure what it is you're referring to. But you have to know that um, you cannot, you can only shift your reaction or your own action. You, uh, so other when there are other people 
a couple of things to be be more mindful of is is um, there are other people who likes to stay in negative engagement. So you have to really check who who it is that you want to work with. If you if the people you're working with is um, into negative engagement, then um, and you still choose to do that, then you are also choosing the negative uh, engagement as well. Sometimes you have no choice. They are just given to you. You have to work with them. You always have a choice. If you believe you don't have a choice, then that is a choice already. So you set it. You process. Okay, I, I let go. I'm neutral. And this is, you, you kind of declare to the universe, this is, I don't want to have the negative emotions anymore. So you set the tone because you have to understand you create your reality. You have that power. If you believe that you don't have that power, then you gave your power away. Yeah, uh, I know it's not, it's not easy to process, but you have the power to create your own reality. That is, that is a fact. So when you start to reclaim your own power, then you will start to shift out of that paradigm. But you have to let go of the belief that I have to do it because I don't have a choice. Because if you, if you believe that, then that is the reality for you. Any other questions, comments? <clears throat> okay. I am just going to share. Um, so let me take a look. Okay, I think I've gone gone through all the things that I want to go through. So let me just go through the um, so we're going to go into a meditation, the zero point meditation. So I just want to um, yeah, I think I've gone through all of these. So this is the zero point meditation and I want to go through just the points of the zero point meditation. What do we actually do? So first thing is um, <clears throat> to activate the central, uh, the, um, the Kundalini, so CK6 and also the central meridian, the energy center number six which is the, the third eye area for this. Activate both and then you merge them both. And then you have the energy center six on top because when that is on top, you become, you turn off the emotion. So before we travel, we want to make sure we turn off the emotion because when you go within, um, you may find things that about yourself that you um, may have judgment against. So that may throw you out of this meditation. So it first is to really let go of the emotions. And then when you go to the zero point meditation, you would be able to get information about 
whatever it is that you um, want to know about. So to the, the, um, the process of activating zero point is very easy. Just zero point activate. Like after you've switched off your emotions with the EC6 on top. And the zero point, um, yes. Yeah, yeah. So zero point um, is, can be at, can be at two places. So it's either in your heart or it could be in your third eye. I usually go to the heart rather than to go to the third eye because um, I like to, that's my preference. However, you pick it. So what I feel is, it is a, um, when I activate that, I feel there's a pulse, like a very, very subtle top pulse in my heart. So I, that's, that's what the light in the heart is referring to. So you will feel that, that there is a, a light pulse in your heart. And that's where the zero point is. And then next, you just allow it to grow. So zero point, expand, activate. You just allow it to grow. So um, that is the process for doing the zero point meditation. Questions? You all understand what we... Um... Okay. Yes. In that case... 